Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm CB Drogi. A quick note before we begin. Would you like to know more about one of the authors featured on Flash Fiction Podcast? Check manowaker.com for contributor bios. This week, do's and don'ts for missionaries serving in Aresian communities by Mike Wen. Missionaries, we understand that many of you who are about to embark on the journey to share the Gospels with the Aresians are apprehensive. After all, there is so much that is different between our peoples that navigating their society can seem overwhelming despite your training. Fortunately, as members of the very second authorized mission, you are in a position to benefit from the knowledge of those who have returned from the first one. We have condensed information from their debriefing into this list of do's and don'ts in the hope that it will provide additional insight as you start your service. Do take advantage of the capabilities offered by your new body, like the great Jesuit missionary Matteo Risi, who donned Mandarin robes as he proselytized in Ming China over tea. The church has always encouraged missionaries to adopt the fashion and customs of the host community. In addition, the Aresian physiology offers new capabilities that you are encouraged to explore. Whether it is running at 100 kilometers per hour on four boneless appendages, or seeing the sunset from the top of Olympus Mons with 270 degree peripheral vision, you'll find that nothing sings a higher praise to our Creator than experiencing the sensual delights of a different type of mortal coil. Don't experiment with any part of the Aresian physiology that pertains to reproduction. With three genders and seven appendages, Aresian reproduction comprises a dizzying array of activities, and many of our missionaries have unknowingly participated in bacchanals. Just remember to decline invitations to any activity that involves the use of any of the posterior limbs that you do not fully understand. Do not engage in parthenogenesis, which is, while not technically sexual reproduction, stains partakers with the sin of pride. After all, God made each of us individual and unique, and it is folly to suggest otherwise. Do wear your cross and display it proudly. The cruciform has been the identifier for those who are in the body of Christ for thousands of years and will continue to be for thousands more. Don't use it as a conversation starter for random Aresian citizens. The shape of the cross does not work as an instrument of torture and execution for the Aresian body, and further discussion would reveal the uncomfortable fact that the shape that would work on them is the pentagram. Do be open to building relationships with individuals embodying unorthodox phenotype. Although the majority of Aresians choose to stay in avatars that are identical to their original physical bodies, there were many who took advantage of the flexibility offered by the digital medium to enhance their physiology. The number of limbs, heads, or wings on the body should not matter. Focus instead on the soul encased within. Don't talk to Aresian citizens who cannot trace their provenance back to the physical realm. The Fourth Vatican Council has declared in no uncertain terms that artificial intelligence is incapable of bearing eternal souls. Charming and interesting as those virtual citizens usually are, any amount of time spent engaging them are better time spent saving actual beings with souls. Do take advantage of the ultra-augmented reality that Aresians inhabit. For example, some from the first mission gained many converts by showing various simulations of hell described in literature. Another option is to create simulations based on events from the Bible and use them as teaching tools. Don't create simulations of heaven. Past efforts based on Dante's or Milton's conceptions have all failed to appeal to Aresians, most of whom found the experiences tedious. No matter. Heaven is but the state of spending an eternity with the Heavenly Father, and as such is ineffable. 
do welcome discussions on the book of Genesis. The Fourth Vatican Council approved a metaphorical reading of that book that is compatible with panspermia, and that means the proverbial Garden of Eden can be on Mars or even outside of the solar system should astronomers uncover new evidence. We have been told that many Eurasians developed fraternal feelings toward our missionaries on account of the proximity of our planets of origin. Don't invite discussions on the book of Revelation. Many Eurasians found its account of the end of time too closely resembled the events that destroyed the surface of Mars, an understandably traumatic episode retained in the collective memory of the species. Do be open when asked about human history, culture, and society. Eurasians are naturally inquisitive and are often fascinated by many aspects of our society. Don't engage in conversation about any of the topics forbidden by the Martian colonial authority, even with other missionaries. Specifically, the authority would absolutely not condone any mention of the geothermal core exploration project. Most Martian citizens' view on this project is mixed. Without it, humanity would not have discovered the servers that host the original inhabitants' consciousnesses and the energy it can uncover could fuel all terraforming activities for generations. But a slight chance exists that the project's activities could cause irreparable damage to the Eurasian servers. Although many of you are understandably conflicted about this project, remember, your calling is to save as many souls as possible, not to engage in Martian colonial politics. This has been Do's and Don'ts for Missionaries Serving in Eurasian Communities Written by Mike Wen The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. I'm C.B. Derogi. Thanks for listening. Episode 0126 Production Copyright 2016 C.B. Derogi and Manawaker Studio.